or from another ruler. We're talking about freedom from our sin and freedom from the consequences of our sin, which is death and spending all of eternity separated from God. That is what we deserve because of our sin. But God sent a way for us to be free from that penalty. And what God sent was his son, Jesus. And so that's what our second song is going to talk about this morning. I'm going to teach you the motions to the chorus real quick. It goes like this. Because you are, you are, you are my freedom. We lift you higher, lift you higher. Your love, your love, your love. Never in dates. Spin in a circle. Then we do some whoa, oh, oh. You are alive in us. Nothing can take your place. You are all we need. Your love has set us free. All right? Hit it, Miss Dory. Forever safe in the Savior's hands You are more than a 
So I am, um, I will tell you as an adult, you don't, big secret, you don't use everything that they teach you all the time. You should know it. <clears throat> I can't tell you the amount of times I've done algebra as an adult, but learn it anyway. Okay. But as you get older, sometimes you tend to forget things that you have not relied on uh, in your information in the back of your head. And I was 
was looking at American history because it's been a long time since I've been tested on it and some of those names and dates and things just are not as readily available in my brain as they used to be. And I found this thing that said that less than 50% or about 50% of Americans, all Americans, regardless of age, 50%, well, at least to the point that they can write and know, 50% of Americans can name all 50 states. Only 50%, only half can name all 50 states. How many of you think you can name all 50 states? One. Okay, and less than 50% could name them in, in four minutes or less. And this surprised me because I just, I thought, no, uh, come on, we can, we can yeah, name all 50 states. So I put a little challenge out um, to some of my friends and the results were surprising. They were all adults. So I thought we would challenge our kids. Now, I know you're in the middle of summer and you are not doing school right now, but I figure some of you can beat the adults on this, right? I have less confidence in this group than I did at 9.30. 9.30 was like, I got that, no problem. Okay, so who thinks that if I give you a marker and the board up there, you could write out all 50 states? Spelling does not matter, but you could write out all 50 states. You think you could? You could try? You want to try? Okay, come on up. Can you help me move the board over here? All right. Tell me your name? Cooper. Cooper. Everybody say hi, Cooper. Hi, Cooper. Okay, Cooper, so spelling doesn't matter. Um, but you have to write the actual name. You can't just write abbreviations for it, okay? Don't start yet. So, are we have two over there? Yes. Let's grab another one. So, of course, when I polled my friends, they were all adults. So, I want to know, do any of the adults in this room think that they could write all 50 states if I gave you four minutes? You think you could? You think so? All right, come on up. This is your Tawny sister, right? Yeah. Okay, so everybody may know her as Tawny sister, but what's your name? Taylor. Everybody say hi, Taylor. Hi, Taylor. Okay, so Taylor, here's your marker. We're going to put Cooper in the middle here, and I'm going to challenge with you guys. Miss Story's going to play a little bit of music, not too loud, because we're going to be trying to think of 50 states. And we're going to see if anybody can get 50 in four minutes, and if not, who gets the most in the shortest amount of time or whatever it is, okay? All right, so Mr. Josh is going to time us. Are you too short? Oh, you can start wherever. <laughs> so, that's not your first challenge, okay? That's just mean. All right, you can write you, you wherever. Can have, you can have three columns if you want to. That's fine. All right, contestants, your time starts now. You can. Oh, Miss, Miss Elizabeth is going. Full disclosure, she did get to do this first hour, so she's got a little bit of a head start. Oh, looks like somebody else might. Oh. Looks like Taylor, Taylor might have a slight lead.
Money. On what piece of currency would you find the face of our first president? Oh, 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 oh. Okay, right there in the striped shirt is the first hand I saw. Do you know? I got it. You got to think about who the first president is first. Please, over here. Over here. Okay, what is it? The one dollar bill. The one dollar bill is correct. George Washington is on the is the first president, and he is on the one dollar bill. Easy to remember. First president, one dollar bill. So most people know who the first president is. Washington. Does anybody know the second? Do you know right over there in red? Uh, uh, Abraham. No, Abraham Lincoln was 16 if I remember my history. What was it? What is it? John Adams is correct. Very good. John Adams, second president. Okay, to which U.S. And you've got a list over there if you can look through them. To which U.S. state would you need to travel to see?
see the Statue of Liberty. Let me come over here. Mason, do you know? What is it? What'd she say? Well, that's okay. Because it's, I mean, it's the name of the state as well. She's in New York City, in the, in the state of New York. I will absolutely take that. New York is the state that you would go to find the Statue of Liberty. As a bonus question, does anybody know what country gave us the Statue of Liberty? Oh, good. What is it? Yes, very good. Nicely done. A lot of people don't know that that was a gift from another country. I'm impressed. All right. What state? There's 50 states. Again, you've got a list over here. What was the last state admitted to the Union? It was not that long ago. Don't yell it out. If, if, if you want to answer it, back in there in the yellow shirt. Hawaii is correct. That was the last state. Okay, so today, the 4th of July, we celebrate because there was a signing of a very important document. Just yell it out if you know it. What's the signing of the document? The Declaration of Independence, okay? There's a lot of important documents in our time. The Declaration of Independence. Okay, so these next ones are just about the Declaration of Independence. Who wrote the Declaration of Independence? Right back there in the pink. Thomas Jefferson, is that what you said? Very good, that's correct. You guys are flying through these. First hour did not do this well. I'm impressed. Okay, we'll see if I can get you on this one. In what city was the Declaration of Independence signed? That's the first hand. Oh, wait. But, oh, hang on. But, but Cooper helps me, so I'm, I'm going to get somebody else. How about right back there in that group? Philadelphia is correct. You guys are awesome. Okay, this one should be a little bit easier. What year was it signed? Okay, let me see. Right back there in the back in the blue. Very good. 1776. All right, and we're going to see. I'm going to switch these around. Um, signed the document first. Let's see who knows. Let me go to it. Very young group doesn't know. Do you know? No? I, I get that one a lot. It's not George Washington. Let's see. How about back there in the yellow? John Hancock is correct. Okay, and I want to read this off of here because I think I messed it up last hour. So I want to read it. Okay. Who knows? Hmm? Do you know it? Because I think I think it was wrong. I think what I said last hour was wrong. Okay, who knows how the Declaration of Independence starts? I was wrong, wasn't it? Yes, I was. I, I had the wrong, because he said that and I had the wrong document. Okay, what is it? Very good! No, wait, that's... That is the Constitution. Oh, no, you're, you're right. That's what I messed up first hour. That's why I pulled it up, because I messed that up last hour. Somebody said it last hour, and we were like, yes, that's right. And then I'm like, no, it's not. That's not. That's the Declaration. That's the Constitution. The Declaration of Independence starts the way that I did read it. Yeah. So who knows the way that the Declaration of Independence starts? give you the first, do you know it? Say real loud. No, that was a speech by Abraham Lincoln. Okay, so let me see if I can start anybody off here. We hold these truths. No. 
Okay, do you know it now? Very good. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. So I am going to read the rest of that because a lot of people can get that part. Now, we the people, in order to form a more perfect union, that is the Constitution. Um, we have a lot of documents. But the Declaration of Independence, which was signed on July 4th, 1776, starts this way. Everybody listen. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. This is my favorite part of this. Listen, this, this is in our Declaration of Independence. That they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. So it has been a while since I've studied U.S. history. I looked up some things last night, and, and I even messed up this morning when we did We the People because I, I was like, yeah, that's it, but it's, it's, it's not. It's a different document. So sometimes things get muddled in my head. So I started looking at all of these things and all of these different documents and all these different dates and all this stuff because I thought we, we celebrate on July 4th, 1776, the day that we gained our independence. We put it all on paper. They signed. John Hancock started. There were a lot of men after that. No women on there. All men. And that was our freedom for everybody and that was the end, right? No, was it that easy to just write up a document and sign it and be done? No, no it was not. So during that time, shh, 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 okay, so we're past the trivia point, so I need everybody to focus back up here. So during that time, the Revolutionary War was happening, which was a war between us and Britain, because remember, Britain was owning, owned those 13 colonies. We were trying to establish our independence from them as our own union, our own place, the United States of America. So in Revolutionary War, this was not a fighting where they were back and forth sitting over a table going, no, I'm going to keep you. No, we're going to be our own. This was not that kind of fighting. This was a war where people were dying. So I looked up. In the Revolutionary War, approximately 7,000 Americans died. A little under 7,000 Americans. That's a big number that died for the freedom of our country. That doesn't include the Britons. This is who was fighting for America to be established as an independent place. They gave the ultimate sacrifice for us to be able to sit here on Sunday morning on July 4th, 2021 and talk about fireworks and hot dogs and all of those things because we have that freedom. It was a hard fought battle to gain that freedom, but it didn't end there. It has continued on because in 1776, even though we became the United States and we established our independence, we did not have full freedom in our country. We still had something called slavery in our country at that time and it continued on for a long time after that. Slavery, where someone is owned by someone else. They are not able to make decisions, do things on their own because something else, some other master is, is taking control of all of that for them. They do not have their freedom. I looked up the, the um, definition of being captive and it says the condition of being imprisoned or confined. That's what was happening at that time. So then when we talked about Abraham Lincoln, Abraham Lincoln came in, had signed the... the Emancipation Proclamation. It's great when things rhyme and they're hard to say. And that abolished slavery. However, that did not still give full freedom to everyone. At that time, women still did not have a right to vote. And even though people were free and slavery was gone, we still had segregation of colors in our country. And when I looked back, so at the time of Abraham Lincoln and the abolishment of slavery, we had another war called the Civil War. So we lost a little around 6,800 6, 6, people in the Revolutionary War, Americans in the Revolutionary War, men in the Revolutionary War. <clears throat> in the Civil War, which was here on our land, fighting for the freedom of our own people, over 600,000 died for that freedom. Over 600,000. That is a huge sacrifice. Huge. 
our freedom did not come easily. It was hard fought. There was a massive sacrifice. And that has continued. We have had other wars where we have fought for our freedom and for the freedom of others. We have fought against so many things. And, and we look back at this and we're like, oh, 1776, well, that was so long ago. We're so far past it. But we're not necessarily because my parents are old enough to remember, and my parents are not, I mean, they're not that old. My parents are old enough to remember when segregation was abolished. And if you don't know what segregation is, it means that by the color of your skin, or the color of your skin determined where you could go to school, it could determine what water fountain you used. So, I mean, you see what color I am. I'm white. And I had more privileges because I was born white. It's not fair. It's not right. It's not okay. That was a hard-fought freedom. And that, that continues in so many places today that not everyone, even though it says we're all created equal by our creator, there's still a hard-fought freedom. It comes with sacrifice and a continual movement forward. And the reason I tell you all that is because the Bible tells us that we are still slaves. And you look at that and you say, but wait, 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 Ms. Elizabeth, we already talked about that. We, got, we gained our independence in 1776. We had the abolishment of slavery. Segregation is gone. I don't understand why you would say that we are slaves. I've never been a slave. My family has never been a slave. This makes no sense to me. It's no connection. But the Bible tells us that we are slaves to something else. Do you know what it is? Sin. What is sin? Sin is anything we, do this with me, think, say, or do that goes against God. So the Bible tells us that we are all slaves to sin because sin is something that can easily entrap us. It is something that can easily overtake us and become a master of us so that we are constantly giving into it. That it controls everything we do. It becomes, we become so selfish in what we want that we don't think about what is good for somebody else, what the rules are, or what is good because God has said that it is so. When we look at this, let me go back to, where is it? It says, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator. And then our Creator is telling us that everybody is still a slave to sin. It sounds like there's not a lot of hope there, but there is hope. If you've got your Bibles, I want you to open up your Bibles to John 8. And we're going to go around. I'm going to have some people read this morning. Open your Bible to John 8, 31. And if you're willing to read this morning and you have your Bible, raise your hand when you get it. Wait until you're there so we know that you're there. John 8, 31. I'm going to have you read 31 through 34 this time. So if you've got it, John is in the New Testament. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Go to John 8, 31 through 34. Raise your hand if you've got it and you want to read. Right there? Okay. Perfect. All right, if you don't have it yet, that's okay. Keep looking for it because we're going to read the second part of it in just a second. But, if, but I want you to go ahead and listen to it right here. Jesus spoke to the Jews who had believed him. If you obey my teaching, he said, you are really my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answer him, we are Abraham's children. We have never been slaves of anyone. So how can you say that we will be set free? Jesus replied, what I am about to tell you is true. Everyone who sins is a slave of sin. Very good. All right, so the people were saying the same thing. Well, wait, we're a descendant of Abraham. We, we are not slaves. We've never been a part of slavery. This does not apply to us. But Jesus say, is saying, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. The Bible tells us in, Roman that everybody, in Romans that everybody sins. So we put those two together. It says everyone is a slave to sin, except for Jesus himself, who never sinned. He's the only one who ever walked the earth and never sinned. So... 
we need something there. There is a hard fought battle in our country for all the freedoms that we have, for all of the people. But here we are, the Bible is telling us through all of time, everybody, regardless of what country you're, you live in, where you're from, what color your skin is, that you are still a slave to sin. So we need some kind of hope. So let's look at the next part of that. Who has the rest of it? John 8, 35 and 36, that can read it. It's just right after what we read. So if you had it open with John 8, it's, it's right after that. John 8, 35 and 36. Anybody have it that can read it? You want to read it? Okay. You got it, Cole? A slave does not remain in the household forever, but a son does remain forever. So if the son sets you free, you really will be free. Good. So the second part of that. If the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. What son are they talking about? Whose son? God's son. Who's God's son? Jesus. So if the son sets you free, then you are free indeed. Great. We have freedom. We can have freedom from our sins. But it says if. If the son has set you free, then you are free indeed. Does that mean Jesus is just going along each day and being like, okay, who do I like today? All right. You're free. And you're free. And I think maybe, well, not today for you, but you're free. Is that how it works? No. No. But there is an if there. So go ahead and open up your Bibles. Uh, switch over. Go a little bit further to Acts. And go to Acts 13, 38, and 39. So if you're in John, just flip over to Acts. 13, yes. Acts, Acts 13, verses 38 and 39. We'll just read the first part of 39. If you've got it and you're willing to read, go ahead and raise your hand. Mr. Josh will come to you. Way back there. So if you were in John, you just go one more book over to Acts and then 13 Let it be in the New Testament. To you, therefore... Therefore, brothers, that though this man forgiveness of sins is proclaimed to you, and by him everyone who believes is freed from everything from which you could not be freed by the law of Moses. Good. All right. So the, I'm just going to read the first part of the, or the second part of that. Through him, everyone who believes is set free from sin. So it's an if because there is a, a point of action that you have to take in order to be freed from that sin. So we have freedom in our country and we are grateful for it and we are thankful for every person that sacrificed, whether it was sacrificed their own life or sacrificed because they gave a life out of their family or sacrificed something else. There's a lot of sacrifice that wasn't even a life um, and fought hard for that freedom. But we can also have freedom in Christ. Because we are slaves to our sin, God is offering us freedom from that, from that slavery, through His Son, Jesus. But it's not just that Jesus is coming down and just picking and choosing people. It requires a course of action from us. It requires us to believe that God has sent His Son and that He has done it ju not just for America, but that He has done it for everybody. Everyone who has lived on any part of the earth, God sent His Son for them. Everybody is equal here. God loves each one of them and loved them so much that he sent his son, the ultimate sacrifice. This freedom, this freedom that we have in Christ was not just an easy thing either. It was a hard fought, given sacrifice. The sacrifice of God's son. A life that was lost. And a perfect life. Because Jesus never sinned. He did not deserve any kind of punishment. But yet he came and took the punishment for each of us so that we could have that freedom freedom from sin and have that ability to be in heaven with him someday when we do die. But again, I go back to that course of action. It, in order to be freed, in order to have that freedom, in order to 
to be given that from the Son, you have to believe that God sent Jesus, that He sent His Son, that His Son died here on the earth, and you have to accept Him as your Savior. There is a step there. It's not just like the signing and we're all done, you know, signing a Declaration of Independence, we are all free. It wasn't that easy. We have to take the step to accept Him, to have that freedom in Christ, to have that hope. So you guys are going to talk really hard about that in your small groups today. Your, your teachers are going to go through a chart showing you kind of what it means to take that step to make that decision, what that decision means. Um, and I want you really to listen, even if you've heard it before. I want you really to listen, and I want you to give the respect to those around you that haven't heard it so that they can listen and understand as well. Before we do that, I've got one verse that we're using for today. We're going to put it up, and it says, It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Freedom for our country? No. No, because this applies to everybody, everywhere. It is for freedom from sin that Christ, Jesus, has set us free. Everybody say this together. Ready? It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Galatians 5.1 God does not want you to be slaves to your sin. That's why he gave you the gift of Jesus.